Hey, fam, fam, it's Tessa and Carolina. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Listen, oh. we, just, we just like to, hey. hey. Oh. oh. <laughs> we, get it, we get it. I love it. I'm here for it. Thank I you, I mean, Tessa, hey, you never for... know who's a new listener that doesn't know who we are. No, so, we got to you know. do it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Of course. And just say my name, girl. Say my name. Say, say my, my name. name. <laughs> And and on that note, <laughs> anyway, back to business. Um, so we've got another amazing guest for you, as always. I think always. I say that same phrase as always every time, but you know it's true. Like we really do have some really cool guests, and we've had a lot of guests that have brought us other guests. Like today, she was introduced to us from Mikhail Chowdhury, who was on. Uh, is that still this season? No, that was the previous season. That was the previous season. Yeah. So he was on yeah. last season. His episode was amazing. Look for that. And he has given us several guests since then. So thank you, Mikael. You've been awesome. Uh-huh. Just the best. Yes. And today's guest is Kelly Lou Dennis. She's an actor, also like an action actor, which is really cool, um, like for action movies, um, a writer, a producer, and a director. And All the she- things. Yes, all the things for sure. Um, we are talking a lot today about her new short film, Good Girls Get Fed, which is in post-production right now, and she's hoping to make it into a feature in the future. And we chat with her a lot, especially about um, being an actor and director in the same project, because it's difficult, you know? And that's something that Carolina's going to do for our upcoming Project Sync. Heck so, yeah, guys. Yeah, we, lo- we get a lot into that. Um And just her whole process and how she has developed her writing to adapt to the different format of projects, which that what I just said will make way more sense in this episode when you hear her break it down, I promise. Um, But we just get into that a lot too, the creation of the project from start to finish. Yeah, no, I think that's actually perfectly said. Um, New listeners or listeners who are learning, you in a short format to a feature to an episodic, they're all their own animals with different like ways the story, the the arcs flow and and what you're hitting. So she she breaks it down for us a bit, and it was it was really awesome to hear how she's um, allowed each project to kind of transition and and turn into something that maybe she did expect it to turn into or didn't we we're always on that journey ourselves so and I'm sure this is relatable to you fam who like been like is this gonna be a short no this is meant for a feature and I have to write it that way um you know you kind of also have to let your story I think at the end of the day speak to you and Mm -hmm. I think she really listens to her her gut on this one so without further ado Kelly Lou Dennis Well, Kelly, um, good morning and thank you for coming on today. Um, We are excited to talk to you because you've done a lot of different things in the film world. I see you kind of started doing action roles and you've been an actress for a while and now you're doing literally everything else. (laughs) (laughs) Writing, producing, directing, all of it. So let's just dive right in there and like talk about, you know, when you first got started and and what brought you even into the business and how that has all kind of evolved for you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I started like a lot of people doing all the silly plays and musicals growing up Mm -hmm. um but I always was comfortable being like in the ensemble oh my gosh if we were singing you (laughs) best believe I was lip singing you were not going to hear my voice (laughs) Um, (laughs) but when I got to uh college was when I took um my first like serious acting class Mm -hmm. and I knew I loved it but once I discovered film acting that's when I realized oh to me then that's what the difference is because I'm um, you know, I go out for some deadpan roles. I have like a straight face a lot of the times. I'm one to like process information and react after. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think discovering that film acting was a possibility and just the most subtle nuanced reactions could tell a full story and it didn't have to feel bigger or projected yeah, um, was okay. really when I really found my niche, I think. 
That's interesting. Um, so. Yeah. Because I, I, like you said, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people start out, you know, doing theater and, and a lot of musical theater and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And I feel like for a lot of us, you know, we get used to that kind of acting. And mm-hmm. a lot of us, I, I don't know if it's because of that or if we're just naturally inclined to then be very expressive people and stuff. Like, yeah. you know, I know for me, one of the hardest things has been to like, keep my eyebrows from moving when I'm on film because I, as you can see, speak with my eyebrows in real life. You, know, you have some great like eyebrows. Your eyebrow game. Thank you. I they are great eyebrows. They're pretty, they're pretty on point. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's interesting for to hear you say that you felt a lot more comfortable with film because it was more nuanced. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'd always been writing um, since I was younger. I, you guys, I hand wrote my first novel in fifth grade in cursive in a notebook. Wow. Um, <laughs> Unheard of these days. Cursive? What? Did we like yeah. learn that anymore? Oh, no. It's a thing of the past. It's a relic, I think. Um, but <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, fifth grade, writing a book. Yeah. Cool. Yep. I and I, I kept writing stories, but and I knew I loved writing. But it wasn't until college, again, that I discovered that screenwriting was a type of writing that really just made sense to me. No fluff. Just tell me exactly what's happening, what you see. Let's get right into what's going on. Yeah. I just don't have time for the fog and the trees with the birds and the, you know, mm-hmm. that for me was never something that I was focused on or as excited by. Yeah. And I'm also very visual. So if I'm writing a story, if I can't see, um, especially the space that the characters are in, I have a hard time writing it. No, so same. once I discovered, oh, same for you. Mm-hmm. It's so helpful to be able to mm-hmm. see, um, you know, the world that you're writing about, yeah. I think. And so finding screenwriting, again, kind of akin to my acting discovery, was just like the totally, the right fit. Oh, I knew I loved storytelling my whole life, but oh, this is my, this is my language. This makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah. those discoveries happened around the same time, actually. Nice. And then mm-hmm. to to realize that, you know, that, that that's the kind of medium that you want to be in and, and create in, did that inspire you then to want to do more with it, i.e. like directing and producing, or did that just kind of come on as a necessity after that? Oh, I definitely <laughs> did not have dreams of doing it all. <laughs> um, my, the school I was at, they, he was teaching, my screenwriting teacher was teaching in feature format. And so I started writing features And got super ambitious. Yes, I did. um, Because I have a hard time writing shorts and containing stories into shorts. Mm -hmm. Um, So I had an opportunity to try to put one of my features up on its feet. And um, just kind of by necessity, I ended up directing. And I did have um, a couple of producers, but that was my first experience directing and acting. And it was, you know, there were were some kinks to be worked out. I'll tell you what. (laughs) Um, but that was my first time, like just feeling it out. And I, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in myself Mm -hmm. and in my vision. So it was a lot of like, Oh, first AD, what do you think of this decision? Oh, DP, what do you think? Is this, is this good? Um, so it was very much everyone's vision, which I'm super collaborative, but there needs to be at least some sort of vision in the first place, um, which was a, a great learning experience. And I tried out over the different projects I tried out having my, I don't want like I've done it with a co-director before when I was acting mm-hmm. and I've done it before where my first AB was sort of the co-director. Um, yeah. So I've had opportunities to see the pros and cons of that funky situation when you're directing and you're directing other actors, but you're also acting with the actors right. and someone has to be, you know, taking a look at everything without going back and watching every single take right. because it takes so long, you know? Yeah. yeah, let's talk about that because that's something we're um, we're doing or have done, and like yeah. it it is like challenging. What are what are some takeaways? I guess between like a co director or like an associate director situation. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a. I just feel like there's so many different approaches, and I've heard of so many success mm-hmm. stories with different, whether it be officially a co-director or if it's someone that's just standing in Mm -hmm. and has like an elevated DP role or something like that. Um, I think when I did the, I co-directed a short that I wrote and um, acted in and my co-director was our DP. So he was very much communicating with 
um, the team, which was mostly his team that he'd brought on the technical side of things. Yeah. And I was working with the actors and um, the makeup artists and <clears throat> some more of the creative visual aspects aside from the technical. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how we had very clear lines of like, hey, this is my area that I work on. This is your area you work on. Of course, we collaborated and shared thoughts on other right. things. Um, but that worked out pretty well. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah, I think it was a, a solid a solid first stab at uh, <laughs> finding dual directors, I'll say. Right. I think it's like, with anything, communication is, is key. And like yeah. being able to like establish where your areas of weakness maybe are. And be like, oh, you know, yeah. this is where I really need support because I'll be acting or whatever. Or like, I just can't communicate this with crew for example as as totally. articulately as you can so maybe that's where I think I think that's what maybe a lot of times people are scared to show like oh if I if I say like maybe this isn't my area of strength and then they're just going to take over the project or you know yeah whatever but I I have the feeling that it's like no the the most important thing is to say where you might be struggling or need that support oh a hundred percent I mean I think we constantly do here at least I have I don't know about the two of you fake it till you make it fake mm -hmm. it till you make it and there is some truth to that I think but at the same at the same time I think being able to lead and saying like hey I don't know how to communicate this I don't have the language and you totally do I have this vision let's chat and you know you are more skilled in this area yeah. so why don't you take the baton on this uh, piece of the project and you can still um, delegate and build a team together like that <laughs> rather than just pretending you know something that you don't yeah. so much. <laughs> I think Absolutely. that makes you a better leader in general um, is and then what I've heard is like you know hiring the right people getting mm -hmm. the right team that's like and and fake it till you make it I feel like is more than so like the start of of like a conversation to yourself more than like <laughs> actually other people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like something you say with your, to yourself or maybe your friend, you know, we're going to pick it till we make it sometimes, but yes. because you learn more. So I think, I don't, and maybe in your case too, with that like literally no one knows anything really. <laughs> <ever>. <laughs> like we're all just, and not knows anything more. So just that we're always all like every film, every even job is a unique situation that right, yes. you have skills that you've had to work on and build over time, mm -hmm. but still in that situation, everyone's just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And every project that I've um, worked on, never once have I been the most experienced person on set. Right. Honestly, I don't know if I'll ever be able to say that in my life. That would be, you know, quite a statement. I'm the <laughs> most experienced person here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if it's something that I'm, uh, a leader or a co-leader on mm -hmm. what I'll tell people is hey look you've worked with more experienced people than me that's a fact but what I can offer you is transparency and honesty and communication and you know from there I think that helps people work together really fluidly yeah and share their experiences together to make one really experienced person collectively yeah <laughs> I think that's important too as in filmmaking and probably in every collaborative art form really, but is to not have an ego about it too, you know, because yes. if you're going into this as, you know, maybe you're the, I don't know, maybe you're a camera operator, but you're not like the DP in charge or something, right? And you happen to have the most years of experience of anybody on this like tiny independent set or whatever. And mm -hmm. you're like, you're not the one making the decisions, so... If you see something that you're like, oh, this is going to be a problem. Yes, absolutely. Speak up. Everybody just wants to make the best product, project, the product <laughs> in the <laughs> end, you know, but also people are learning and it's not your project. You're not the one that's in charge of it. So just be collaborative, be willing to work with other people and give them what they want at the end of the day, you know, and just don't have an ego about it because yeah. that's going to make things uncomfortable. That's going to make people question their decisions and then that's going to make everything take longer and not be as successful in the end, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, that's something that I found too, that was very helpful, especially on this last project when I'm starting to really put together what experiences I have gathered um, and, you know, kind of start intentionally honing in a certain way of working with um, a team mm -hmm. is look, I have a strong idea and I have strong opinions 
And I've brought you all on because I believe in you and I think you're very skilled in what you do. So if there's somewhere that we disagree, change my mind, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah. make me understand why that way is better and let's do it. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, that way everyone gets that. a voice and everyone can collaborate and, you know, uh, no one's going to, everyone's going to be in charge of their own area and be the expert in their area, if you will. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, you know, and that, that it, like empowers your team and also yes. and then empowers your project because I think sometimes we need our ideas to be challenged a little, like a little, Mm -hmm. like, you know, like (laughs) a little sprinkle. Um, No, I'm kidding. But like, but like, actually, yeah, like we, if you, if you're the expert, you see something that I'm missing as the director, like, yeah, of course, like I'm going to want to hear it. I want to know because that is the beauty of collaboration and where, yep. why, you know, I think certain projects end up doing the best is because they mm-hmm. trust their, their crew. And so I love that you said that. I think it's, it's a very empowering thing to say, you know, it challenged me, if it, you know, make me understand. Not yeah. even yeah. like, in a, in a, that doesn't mean in a nasty way. So no, I love yeah. that. And so leading into your next uh, project, let's uh, talk about it. I, I, um, so good girls get fed. Yeah. Thank you, Tessa. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Let's talk about Good Girls Get Fed. What is it? What's the 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 premise? And what are what are you heading on that as your role? And why are you so like excited about it? We want to we want to know all the tea. Yes, spill the tea. Um, <laughs> yes. Good Girls Get Fed is a short thriller um, about three women who are trapped in this space and they're forced to perform these degrading challenges twice a day. And if they win a challenge, then they get food. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, well, I guess you just have to wait for the next challenge. And um, each of the challenges is designed or built to reflect the way that our society um, objectifies women Mm -hmm. and um, classifies us, if you will, and puts us in boxes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yes, they're degrading challenges, but they're also degrading in a way that I think many women uh resonate with of mm, I know what that is yeah um right yeah so wow. we're in post-production right now okay um yeah it's been quite a journey I wrote it initially with a couple other ladies and uh we finally got it on its feet so nice it's been great seeing it come together in the edits though of course it's still a beast post-production <laughs> yeah. right that's just another that's the real start of the journey sometimes I feel yeah you're like we got it done and now it's like really (laughs) putting it (laughs) putting it together yeah yeah I know it's like people that um don't people that haven't made their own film I should word it that way (laughs) um Mm -hmm. don't really always kind of realize the importance of pre and post production I think or like the gravity that it has because you know we think production like actually filming it is the most important part and yes obviously the film wouldn't exist if we didn't have production but like exactly it's just so important to like put the time and the work and the effort into pre-production and then Mm -hmm. post like you said as its own beast like it can make or break the film sometimes you know so yeah it's just like they're just such such important elements and huge elements to it yeah yeah it was hard to um I guess, give permission in the beginning to take, we did have a pretty hefty pre-production, partially because we were assembling the team Mm -hmm. uh, piecemeal and we really picked up steam in um, October and then launched into a crowdfunding campaign. But we'd really started piecing it together back in June and brought on some of the key members of the team then and really um, realizing that it could be an actual (laughs) uh, thing that happens. Right. But, you know, that's like not quite a year of Mm pre-production but I would say like four solid months of pre-production and we it was hard because at the same time we've been working on this project for so long and people have been attached for so long and it's like okay we want to shoot it already but you know at the same time I'm I don't know if it's the half Chinese in me or what but I just want to have everything organized and prepared and have a plan for (laughs) everything um, Tessa and I, I were that... literally were just having this conversation <laughs> in regards to our project. It just like it takes time because we we have we have a team loosely attached, you know, that we've been talking with, staying in touch with, and yeah. but we we know the importance just because we're in crowdfunding mode 
that even once we get this the money like okay that's when real pre-production for the the creative starts because we have yes. money to to do it <laughs> yep. and yep. and to technically we could just jump into filming but why would we do that if we right. need the time to really set up the creative work yeah. then next yep because at the end of the day explosions are going to happen things are going to set on fire it's going to happen yeah. so the more the more plans you have in place you know the more the quicker you can put those fires out when they do pop up and surprise you but um, yeah, yeah exactly so I love that you even I think for a short film four months is still like a great amount of time um for yeah. the real like pre-production to start I I did that I that's been my experience I'm working on other shorts like mm -hmm. four months yeah. is, is like the like it's still like a good enough time to make sure your team and they get rehearsals in and stuff Absolutely. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's you always wish you had more time. So I tried to remind myself of that as well. I'm always going to want more time. So just, you know, yeah, we do have a little time right now, but let me just knock out as much as I can because I know something else is going to come up. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And something else, too, is like, you know, when again, when people that aren't in the production world look at this and say, like, well, how, why does it take you so long to do this? And it's like yeah. most of us have other jobs and lives. And, you know, I mean, Carolina and I, like, we're both actors first. Carolina yeah. also produces for other people. And, like, we, awesome. we run this podcast. We have full-time jobs that are separate, <laughs> you know. And it's like you got to have a life at some point, too, or you're just going to be yep. miserable and exhausted. So exactly. it takes a long time because it's a lot of work on its own. But you have to balance yep. that with the rest of your life, too. So... Absolutely. Yeah. And especially when we're working on these smaller, low budget projects and people are already pulling favors for you. And I think that's how I ended up with a producing credit. That was mm -hmm. never the plan. Um, but it got to a certain point where I think, you know, I, the plan, I guess, was for me to have an EP credit. And one of my producers, Mikhail, had a moment where he was like, you know, mate, you do realize that you're producing. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, you are actually um, producing. It's not exactly. just, like, the credit, quote-unquote. Like, you are producing. <laughs> you are producing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think if you write your own project, again, for these smaller, low-budget things, these passion projects, right. I feel like if you're a writer, you're going to end up producing to some capacity, probably a lot more so yeah. than you thought that, you know, you were going to. So, but luckily I had a team, a wonderful team on. In fact, my... My favorite absolute um, compliment from the shoot, we shot for four days, but my favorite compliment was, wow, what a team. Mm. Wow, everyone is just so kind and so talented and so creative and collaborate so wonderfully together. I mean, that was, to me, probably the best reward. I mean, getting the film will be pretty rewarding as well <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> yeah yeah just having so many wonderful people working oh, together that's the best that's mm -hmm. the goal I think um as I talked to everyone and also worked on a great set it's like that's what I want like yes because the end product will most likely be amazing but even if it's not like your greatest thing yet you can mm -hmm. know that you have a team now that will follow you like you oh, sure. you don't lose that everyone's going to want to continue to work on your next and, and cause they know what, you know, with bigger budgets and more time, it's only going to yep. get better for you. So mm -hmm. that's, that's something too. I think that like people I think overlook <laughs> yes. is that there's such great, there it's even more valuable than they think. Yes. Yeah. So, and I'm so excited in the future. I have all these people that I'm just absolutely excited about. I didn't know I could be, excited about a script supervisor you guys yeah. <laughs> I know, get it an incredible person That's it's like amazing. wow you are teaching me so much like this is incredible let's let's do this again you know yeah and that's yeah. what you know so many of our guests on here say find your tribe and like yes that mean that can mean so many things you know but like yeah it's like once you find those people that you work well with and you trust like that's huge yes yeah yes yeah. I'd also love to share because we were talking about um, acting and directing. Mm -hmm. I kind Please. of took a, a different approach for, uh, for good girls because I, um, my character was definitely on screen much more than previous projects where I was directing or co-directing. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to share the approach I took because it actually worked out incredibly well, mostly because I had two incredible people working with me. Yeah. Um, but I brought on, 
uh, a good friend of mine who is, they act, they, they're an incredible writer. They're actually in one of my writer's groups. Um, they've also directed uh, short films, a couple which have gotten into some cool festivals. And so I knew, okay, well, they know, maybe even edited and taught themselves how to color. So they have an idea technically of a whole project. Yeah. Um, and they were also great friends. They just officiated uh, my wedding. Oh, actually. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, wonderful human being. But they agreed to come on. Um, and I knew I wanted to um, direct this one because I had a very clear vision. Like shot to shot, I can see the whole movie mm-hmm, for right. the first time. But they were incredible and they came over and worked with me and learned my shot list and learned um, what I was going for. And of course came up with their ideas and things like that. But they came on to sort of be the person that people could communicate with on set since they had that experience. And um, I guess the, 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 able, the ability to communicate with, you know, lighting and sound yeah. and whatever. Um, so they were on to look at my shots and my husband actually, um, we're big sharers. So he's been, he's known about these characters since the moment they were conceived Mm -hmm. years, years ago. Um, so he was kind of like, I guess the acting coach, acting supervisor, because he's been doing my self tapes for years as well. And now we've had a couple friends start wanting to come and self tape with him as well. Cause he's just become wonderful. Um, with giving feedback for acting yeah and uh yeah so he came on we went through the whole script a number of different fun little dates where he wanted to get behind the characters and asking me questions that I would never have thought of um and so he really understood who the characters were in every scene in every moment and um I mean very quickly the other two leads they, they wonderfully started working with him and trusting him and it was so cute seeing like you know someone would call cut depending if it was me or the other person and my husband would run up and he knew how to talk quietly to the actor oh we love that that. great yeah you know it was so sweet seeing that uh happen and then work together yeah so I had the two of them uh looking at the monitor when I was on 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 screen I guess I should say right yeah and that both of them were able to communicate and make decisions I trusted both of them hey when I'm not you know available to make a decision or it's not that important to pull me out of a scene you guys go ahead. I trust you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was kind of our fun no, little that's so Thank you for sharing that because yeah. like, that's kind of what I think our goal is like being um, the director. I'm the director and to like um, also be one of the leads. It's mm-hmm. like, I want to, I love that I'm working with Tessa because she's an amazing Aww. actress. I can always like boast. I can't boast about her enough. Um, <laughs> my one take Tessa. God bless. <laughs> thank you, um, thank you. We love one take. <laughs> love one take, Tessa. Um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a journey. Um, <laughs> no, I I and 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 basically, I would love to put my trust in in my team when I'm I'm really working on an intense shot that we really only need one take that yeah. they know we got it so we can you know move forward. Yep. And I think yep. because again, we we need. I'm the kind of person I don't like to, I, if times allows it for us to do like multiple runs, amazing, but I'm a, I'm a fast paced individual. So, yeah. so I want my team to, I want to have great team. And it's nice to know that like for you, um, yeah, finding those right people. I know we're, we're in talks. We have an amazing like DP that I feel like I could trust in the, how it looks like he's got incredible vision. Um, yes. so I think that all like, helps give it, it's helpful for me to hear because we've got so many people on our <laughs> podcast where you know different experiences share stuff but I do think it's possible to just yeah. you can do it all with the right support and that's all you absolutely need. you just need the right support because I've, I've directed Tessa before um <laughs> like all of her things <laughs> we thought oh. we're always just like and it's and she's amazing and easy to work with and and like just rolls with it like I do we just roll yeah. with it and that's yeah. why and I'm like I know we're gonna have a great time it's gonna be a mm-hmm. shit show of a fun time <laughs> well every every set is a shit show let's be honest oh, oh my god like, yeah. so. but like well and it's like uh it's horror thriller we're gonna get messy we're gonna get real yes. into it I'm so excited oh so fun <laughs> yeah yeah, but I just like yeah. I'm already envisioning those moments where we get to like really play, and I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, right. Well, also when you're acting and directing, if you really trust your 
you know, like your DP or your co-director or your whoever. Yeah. Um, it gives you freedom to then be able to stop, put director, director hat away for a moment mm -hmm. and then really just drop into it because that was a big fear of mine too. I really, right. and I told my husband, I was like, which was also great. I could be like, Hey, look out for this. Don't let me do this. Don't let me get away with this in the scene. Cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. No, I don't have to worry about it because mm -hmm. he'll call me out if, you know, this concern of mine starts showing up uh, on, in my performance. But also, I really didn't want to pull director hat over to actor body. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, yeah. you know, I've seen when you see an actor acting and they're thinking about the shot. So I wanted to make sure that that was avoided as much as possible right. anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that totally makes sense. Hey, Fem fam, have you heard us raving about Jambox yet? Because let me tell you, it's such an amazing tool for filmmakers, podcasters, advertisers, and anyone who needs music for their projects. Jambox.io is so versatile. They've got songs and sound effects organized by artists, genre, mood, and tags. And they're actually affordable. For as little as $9.99 a month for independent creators, $6 a month for students, or $19.99 a song, you can choose whether a subscription-based membership or a la carte pricing works better for you. And they're flexible. For individual creators, to commercial, to advertising, to theatrical release, they've got you covered. Plus, they're constantly growing and evolving. With new songs and playlists all the time and customer service on point, they really do have everything you need. We've been working with them for a while now and couldn't be happier. That's why we have a special coupon code for our listeners. For 10% off your purchase, make sure you enter code FEM10 at checkout. That's FEM, F-E-M-M-E, -M -M -E, 10 at jambox.io, where they connect creators with ridiculously good music and sound effects. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about um, Sundance Collab Lab because I saw that you yes. were involved with that. So was that for this film or separate or? Oh, that has been my heartache. <laughs> I was so excited to uh, start taking classes with them because um, as I mentioned in college, I learned feature writing mm -hmm. and every single film I watch to this day, I'm such a dweeb and I have a timer on and I'm like finding each beat. Oh, that was oh, interesting. Exciting. That's smart to do oh, actually to like oh, see it that way. Yeah. Oh, I, it's amazing. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Yeah. I, I know feature structure now inside and out back of my hand. My husband wow. knows it. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. He can't help it. Um, but with Sundance collab, I'd had this concept that I thought was a feature. Then I thought it was a trilogy. Then I realized, oh, dang it, it's a TV show. Mm. Um, and in Sundance Collab, we did this, the first introductory class where it pulled an outline out of us. Um, so I came up with this outline, finally, of this concept I'd been sitting on that uh, I came up with my sister and my best friend when we were teenagers. And so it's been brewing for a while. And I came up with this outline, and I'm so excited about it. But then... <laughs> the baby of good girls was born and I've been having that on the back burner, this outline that's been burning. Um, and so now that we're in post and things have settled down a bit, I've finally been able to start working on uh, writing that pilot as well. Very cool. Yeah. And how, um, because, you know, different formats are so different, like a feature even versus a short, you know, they're both films, mm -hmm. but obviously like the beats and the progression of everything is different. So how different has it been for you to go then from like knowing feature format for sure, having worked mm -hmm. in short format and then going to si like series episodic Absolutely. kind of format? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I found this incredible book that was recommended to me, oh. um, Story Maps by Dan Calvisi. Okay. I haven't heard of that one. I'm going to look it up. Story it's maps. great. It's a very short, quick read too. So yeah, I'm definitely. Daniel Calvisi. Calvisi, yeah. yeah. And also I emailed him because he left his email in there and I thanked him for how, uh, you know, world opening it was for me, his book. <laughs> yeah. And he responded, sweet man. Um, yeah, no, it, it's a, an incredible book for a structure for TV. Um, I, of course, was looking at the one hour drama mm -hmm. book, um, but that's kind of been my touchstone. Now that I have this outline that I built using his book and also working with my um, mentor in the Sundance lab uh, class, now I'm just trying to write it. And then once I just spit it all out, then I'll take it back to his book and start <laughs> readjusting things to make sure the structure is appropriate. But um, yeah. 
yeah, it's a different beast, but I, what I love the most about it is I, um, I tend to write ensembles. So you just have so much more space to world build and to get into characters and relationship um, than in a film where it's so plot driven and, you know, beat, 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 and you have to push through to the end. Right. So, so yeah. when you say ensemble, you like mean the, the back kind of story and like the journey of each kind of moment to moment. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar I, with the term in that way. So, Oh curious. yeah. I just mean, there's so many characters. Okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah. The ensemble of the cast. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's a couple main characters for sure. Um, but you know, there's probably about 15, 18 characters that, you know, really have some pieces right. in the pipe itself. So it's just a lot to juggle. Um, and in a feature, you know, you, you, you only have so much time. Right. No, yeah. that makes sense because when I'm watching a series, I'm like, how that like I'm always blown away. Uh, we haven't written for an episodic yet. Uh, we have mm. one film that we journeyed from a short to a feature to maybe a sonic now back to a Ooh. feature. Yeah. That's <laughs> Sherka, um, that like it and I was just like, oh my god, I can't even I want to get really good at uh, feature length story structures, I think. Um yeah. but it's just yeah the with I'm always amazed by how they can really lengthen um these these series to like a million episodes and yeah and I think it comes yeah I'm always like we get to follow along more other characters and and does that like I guess what how how have you been able to I guess stay on the main like story with such a large ensemble because you said 15 other like <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> it, it is a lot it, but you know I think I'm giving myself permission to like hey this person needs to be introduced because they're going to be very important throughout the series mm -hmm. but I don't have to make a whole piece with them because I know maybe episode four can be focused more on them so my mm -hmm. structure idea is that yes we're always going to be following the protagonist but someone else is going to be highlighted in each episode. That way we can kind of learn about each of these different characters because I'm just fascinated, you know, writing and acting wise um, with just how people operate and why people do what they do yeah. and why good people supposedly do what they do or how bad people, like why they operate the way that they do. Yeah. Um, so really having yeah. the opportunity to first make an impression, first hopefully get, some sort of judgment coming from the audience and then try to turn that on its head and open your mind to realizing that, you know, you just don't know what's going on behind everyone's uh, first impression. I love that. That's yeah. really, that's a really smart way of doing it too. I see why you would take the time then to introduce, introduce everyone in that way. That's yeah. Yeah. Like we all then we're always, we're always judging each other in life anyways. When we first meet <laughs> mm -hmm. anyone, you can't help it. That's just yeah. the human yeah. mind. So it, that's, it must be a really cool way to do so on screen and like have everyone's judgment be tested. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It's, a, it's very humbling. I think when you, you find yourself judging somebody in real life and you know you're doing it and you're like stop that's you don't need you don't know that yeah and then you learn that you were also oh very wrong in some way you know it's like oh see there you go that's what you get for being judgmental mm -hmm. yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love I I love that concept um and I think it, empathy is is a it, in my personal experience, a tricky thing because I've I've over I think sometimes empathized with people, yep. um, and and not judged enough. But then it's <laughs> like that weird. Well, I don't know. I can we can go on a whole different <laughs> podcast, <laughs> like episode on that. 100%. Um, so I love that you're you're questioning like all all that around. So have you written the full series on that? Or I'm sorry, you might have already stated that you just uh, got the, the pilot on that done. Yeah, we are on page 21 right now. Nice. So nice. <laughs> I've yeah. discovered that it's like, okay, you know, work on post-production, work on this piece, work on that piece, work on my actual day job, work on, you know, all the stuff we got to right. do. But right. then my break has been finally getting to sit down and work on the outline and it's delightful that that's been what feels like a treat yeah um but I think I also did have to talk to a number of filmmaker friends to get permission to write it because 
I think um, a big thing I've learned from this whole experience with Good Girls is, and I get the sense you both have a great understanding of this, is like learning to trust your gut, which sounds so simple and we hear that so much, I know. But, you know, I look back on so many different situations where it's like, I had a feeling that this would happen or this would be a better right. choice and I didn't speak up and look what happened. And um, mm. an example of that could be the situation I brought up with how I had my husband and my good friend. I mean, that's really weird when I'm bringing someone on for perhaps a discounted rate who's very experienced and I have to be like, ah, this is my husband uh, <laughs> who is not really in, you know what I right. mean? Like, yeah. It's definitely got some eyebrow raises, but it's like, no, like, trust me, this is going to work wonderfully. Yeah. This is the best opportunity that we have to, you know, have someone looking out for the work when I'm acting or whatever it may be. Right. And I bring that up because I felt so much pressure, even though I was dying, am dying to continue writing this pilot that I've been waiting to. Part of me felt like, well, you directed Good Girls Get Fed. And once that gets finished, people are going to be looking for the feature version, which absolutely it is. It's barely hanging on to a short. So it's definitely has the material to be a feature. Yeah. And I'm excited to write that feature and develop it. But at the end of the day, my heart right now is in this pilot and I'm dying to write it. But it was like, well, I don't know, maybe I should focus on the feature because that would make more, uh, you know, mm -hmm. make more sense for post festivals and all of this. Yeah. But 100% of the writers and filmmakers that I talked to said, look, you just have to work on what your heart is asking you to work on. Yeah. Because, you know that's what's going to write itself the quickest mm -hmm. and then you'll be done and then you can move on to the future and you'll have to so. exactly <laughs> right. trust yourself yeah because what's you know what it's filmmaking is so all-encompassing like you literally yeah. are like every day thinking about whatever project you're currently working on so you it's got to be something that your heart is really in you know and if that means mm -hmm. like right now it's this project and then when that's done it'll be this project go with it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be and miserable I, working on this same project every day. <laughs> like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I find that sometimes it helps your original project writing process more to mm. take a break, write something else, come back to it. Um, because some, cause sometimes I'm worried like, Oh, the fire is going to like just blow out and burn. But also, yeah. like, if you are burning for something else that's just in you, you have to, you have to write it, Kelly. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. you have to, you have to just do it. And I yeah. think it'll, you've already have a structure for the other story. Like, you, you have, you know, the theme, like, you, it's in you already. So, yeah. yeah, then you'll, you'll come back and it'll be maybe even quicker to write. You know, that's what I I'm saying. I think so. I think yeah. that's. No, you're totally right. Because now, now that you say that, it's like, huh. I guess I have spent three and a half years with these wonderful characters, but maybe it's time to just give it a little break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. I'm um, you know, back to Turka, that, that script that I was talking about that we've changed yeah. formats. Like I'm excited now that I've experienced writing a full feature to revisit that and be like, all right, we can, I know now the weight of a feature, how that can work. I, I can maybe finally finish this ending that was killing me <laughs> like two years ago and like also though may maybe we do then surprisingly turn it into an episodic you never know then those you never opportunities. Know. <laughs> um and something else I wanted to just say about your husband which is so cool it's like all like acting school acting classes film like that process is just sitting and observing people for like when you're in acting class you, you go on for maybe like you know however 15 20 minutes of work yeah. but the other two and a half hours of that class because they're always really long yep. like acting school <laughs> you're just you're just sitting there watching and lick, looking at the feedback and stuff so if he's done hours of work he's gotten an education in that like you know yeah. like to some degree so I yeah. think that's really cool I think a really skilled person is being able to observe and and know like you said the right ask the right questions back to an mm -hmm. actor and that's something I feel like I've given me confidence in the directing roles. Like I've done this so much. Like I, I helped my roommate the other night with a directing. She's like, oh my God, you're so good. And I'm like, oh. I'm just so used to like, which is like really nice to hear. Cause I, yeah. again, I really only like direct Tessa <laughs> the time yeah. Yeah. when we get to finally do it. And it's like, yeah, I've, I've sat here. I've done the work. I've been here and I know like what to 
ask to pull things out of people or get them focused on the right things to enhance yeah. their performance. So that's that's like really cool. Um, I, I just wanted to credit him in that way because I get yeah. it. That's probably really intimidating for sure to like bring on. Um, oh, it was so know, sweet. Yeah. When we first started dating, it was like, um, hey, would you mind helping me? I have this, it's called a self tape. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. And we get, you know, in the situation and I hand him the script and it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> I, I read with, with you. Right. Yo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's learned. So, He's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I think whatever partners we end up in life is just like, yep, they get roped into our madness. So. Yep. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> I mean, it's our life. We got to juggle, like you said, so many things. And I think a supportive partner in that case will, will just have to learn how to read lines in the very east. Like you don't even have to act, honey. Just, yeah. just say it back. But they always want to act. That's the funny yes, they thing. Do. They always like <laughs> want to, you're like, okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Now we turn it down a little bit. There you go. There we go. There we go. That's the right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I want to back up just a little bit or revisit um, Sundance yeah. collab because we had um, a guest on our show, my gosh, so many seasons ago now. That was like at least a year ago. Um, but she yeah. had talked about Sundance Collab and what they have to offer. So for our listeners that maybe weren't listening back then, um, I'd love for them to hear from someone who has been in the in the lab, um, yeah. kind of what it had to offer you and what you got out of it. Yeah, um, the Sundance Collab group I mean they offer a bunch of different classes and the first one was really interesting because it was pre-recorded tapes but we had an incredibly talented um what would you call her like our I guess our assistant teacher okay sort of Mm -hmm. um so she would hold uh weekly like um live zooms and we could ask any questions and open up discussion we also had a discord channel um I think there was I want to say there was like 40 of us So it was not only great to learn from the classes, um, which were very instructional and educational, uh, educational, not instructional, there we go, (laughs) but um, also getting to connect with so many different writers and ask questions and Uh um, try to figure things out together. And there was so much resource sharing and actually one of, it was my first writers group and I'm still, I'm still in it now. Um, There's six of us left. And we meet every week and we go through and one is in Brazil and one is in Italy, two are in New York, two are in LA. And um, just getting to connect with other writers was a huge win on my end. And um, my, I guess our assistant teacher who was really the only person we were really interacting with, she was incredibly helpful and offered a lot of perspective that wasn't just like textbook sort of information, Mm -hmm. but she, um, she's a woman of color. And so she was sharing different um experiences that she's had which were very encouraging like how you know yes you do want to take in people's feedback but in a very um like consider lots of people's feedback and don't just take one person's opinion to mean something she had lots of people telling her an idea didn't work and then she realized oh look at the demographic of where those notes are coming from and she ended up making the short film that went on to win awards um, yeah. but you know, just considering your demographic or right. I digress this very specific story, but it just was great to speak with somebody who was so established and talented and experienced. Um, and I, I know some of us went on to take the next class, which I put that on pause just because good girls started to become my everything. Yeah, um, right. but I did hear about the next class, which was a little bit less, um, about watching the pre-recorded videos, but it was taking that outline and developing it then into um, a first draft. Mm -hmm. And it was, I believe they were broken up into small groups is what I hear. And then um, you would be with that group the entirety of the course and you would read each other's work and you would also have private meetings with your instructor. Um, And I know one of the people who I know who took it, he's the, her instructor has been mentoring her for months after. So um, all in all great information but even more so a great sense of community and a lot of people to bounce ideas off of, which has been invaluable. Yeah. I love that. Those are my favorite classes where it's like you build an actual community that carries over, you know, it's not just like, Mm -hmm. I like working with these people in class. It's like, Oh, these are now like people that I'm going to hire or want to work for. Yeah. 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 
I think that's great to hear. I've, I've been interested in the past to take up one of their courses. I just, again, timelines haven't worked out yet for me. Um, but it's nice to hear that it's not like, oh, okay, I paid for this thing. I played videos. The community is like, eh, like, right. you know, we're not like really uh, like connecting, especially mm-hmm. virtually. I think it's a hit or miss. It either really works and you feel super connected with everyone yes. and like really know each other. Or it's just like you're a, you know, blip in the, the Zoom calls. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I also appreciated that um, the... I keep calling her the assistant teacher, but that's totally not the <laughs> correct term. Our TA? Yes, our TA. Yeah. There we go. I guess that is teacher's assistant. Well, <laughs> yeah. here, here we are. Um, but <laughs> she, <laughs> she's also very um, in touch with the current climate as far as, mm. like, because I was learning in a five-act structure, and that's what I was writing for, and then she took the time to explain to us. She was really recommending a, writing in a three-act structure but explaining how it's loosening up because unless you're writing for studio, when you need those four commercial slots, Mm -hmm. you don't need to have these big cliffhangers necessarily throughout the, the episode quite the way you would if you needed to pull someone through four commercial breaks. Yeah. Um, So just, you know, information like that, where it's not just like, write it this way. It's like, write it this way because in this current climate, X, Y, Z. So that was also very helpful and, yeah. No, no so that makes so. sense. I didn't, I never really thought about that because yeah, you know, it used to be before streaming and stuff, there were commercials and everything. And now, mm-hmm. you know, you have shows that are not built to have that commercial break. And yeah. it's funny when you watch like a show that had, that was built with commercial breaks built in, but it's yeah. like, you know, you're watching like it, it on the DVD collection or whatever. And like, of course, you know, when a commercial breaks there, because it's like, that would be the pause. Like there's a cut and it's <laughs> obvious, but I never thought about like how it's, yeah. Like the, the action or whatever is building up to that cut. And so yep. it's I've an even more dramatic cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've not thought about that. That is actually <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Isn't that a good nugget? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, I mean, like, look at so many, um, I, I say hour loosely, but hour long uh, series is where each episode, it could be 45 minutes for an episode, mm-hmm. or it could be an hour 20. Like, you know, yeah. some of them really fluctuate. So yeah. Things are becoming, I think, less and less structured in a in a way. Yeah, yeah. That and that's in that's just like I feel like an ever evolving thing. So to have someone in your pocket being like guiding you is so mm-hmm. like I think helpful. Because um, yeah, I wouldn't even have thought of it like that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now you know. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've also, um, with the group, we've had different times when, I think it was after New Year's, when we're all, I mean, everyone's just exhausted. Everyone has no time. Yeah. No one had pages ready to go. Mm-hmm. But um, I was asked for a one-pager, and I had this moment of, oh my god, what is a one-pager? Google had very little concrete <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, information for me so I was able to bring it to the writers group and surprisingly even though a lot of people have various levels of experience in the business side of things no one had a solid answer yeah. and so you know together we spent a round actually where every week each person did their own one pager and we talked about that for the whole hour wow. um, so just, yeah. you know trying to figure out what some of these terms are and noticing how um, like the writer who's in Italy she was asked for like a five page document that's what she was asked for. Hmm. A five-page what? Yeah. Oh, just a five-page do- document. Oh, okay. Is that a, like, what is that? A you know, script, I, a proposal, or what? Is, yeah. Exactly. A one-pager that is five pages? Or, like, <laughs> yeah. what, you know, what is this? Wow. Um, so that's been another really important piece, I think, of talking to other writers um, is yeah. being able to be like, what is this? Yeah. Oh, none of us know, and there's no information anywhere great we'll work it out together and figure out the best thing we can come up with but yeah and I think that's important is like you know you want to sound professional you want to understand like you know all these terms and you don't want to seem yeah. green but when somebody throws something at you that you're like I genuinely don't know what that means and it's yep. not an easy google search like yeah it's yeah. important to have that community it can be like oh okay I've heard this term like once before and this is what yeah. they were asking for but yeah <laughs> and that validation when the whole rest of the group is like yeah, I don't know either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're all out here acting like we totally know these terms. And, yeah. You know, and even some learn. terms that are, you know, established terms 
doesn't necessarily mean that they're exactly always the same, you know? Yep. Like, for instance, you know, exactly. we just compiled a proposal for our feature, and it's like, well, the, there are certain things that you have to make sure make it into a proposal, but then there's also sure. certain things that, like, would probably make it look better but aren't absolutely necessary, and these are, yep. like, even a bonus, and, like, this is a mm-hmm. really cool thing to put in there that most don't have it, and, like, it's everything, you know, everything's a yeah. little different. So, yeah. <laughs> and now you're making... Uh... Not exactly PowerPoints, but you're putting together presentations when you signed up to be a filmmaker, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all I do every day. <laughs> like, pitch decks on pitch decks. Yep. I'm the pitch deck master now. <laughs> Canva's my best friend. Yes, it is. It's amazing. I love Canva. Shout out. I want them to sponsor us. <laughs> Canva, Canva. Canva. <laughs> harmony, girl, a little harmony for our Love ensemble, it. girl. Yes. yes. Well, oh. to wrap up this episode, do you have any plans for Good Girls Get Fed yet? As far as like what you're hoping for, like distribution, festivals, any of that? Yeah, um, great question. I, I think once we wrap up um, post, mm-hmm. then it'll definitely be. I, I mean, I've heard. And myself, I have done this as well, where it's just like, we're going to send it to festivals. Yeah. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah. But my hope is to sit down with um, a couple of my producers, make a targeted plan, because yeah, I would love to, you know, submit to all the best festivals, but to be realistic and to look at what the content is and right. to look at what's appropriate and find, you know, some higher, some lower level festivals, some in-between. Um, I know we've had talks of hiring a a festival doctor is that what it's called a uh, film festival Direct. yeah film. like someone that will help you make that plan and figure yes, out the best who, ones to submit to and yeah, yeah exactly has a great pulse on um the different festivals and what they're looking for and stuff like that yeah. um so that may be on the table we'll see um we'll see once we see what the final budget looks like yeah. but uh <laughs> I'm just making a plan for the festival circuit doing that for about a year and um from then using the short film to i mean it depends either it'll be you know helping it be a proof of concept as far as my style Mm -hmm. for this pilot script or hopefully at that point we'll have the the feature version script of good girls get fed um because i know it definitely as one of my producers says could be a franchise so yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Mm-hmm. amazing well thank you kelly this has been an awesome episode it's, you've given us a lot of insight um and let our listeners know where they can find you maybe any of your previous work how they can follow you social media all of that yeah um i i, I mean i guess instagram would be the easiest one it's it's just my name kelly lou dennis <laughs> <laughs> um and i have a website as well same thing kelly dennis.com but Thank you both so much for having me on. It's so inspiring to see what you're doing, you. um, lifting up female filmmakers and giving us voices and sharing with, you know, your audience. I, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank you. We, lo- yeah. <laughs> we love hearing that. <laughs> we love, love hearing that. Did we pop your podcast cherry or did we pop your podcast cherry? <laughs> oh, it has been popped. It's done. We did it, Sam. We did it. And it was great. Thanks for listening to FemRegard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in every Friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the FemFam on Patreon. For more on us, check us out at FemRegard.com. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.